Hello and welcome to Up Your Vibe and this week's show is going to be very interesting to people who care about their looks and they want a different way to going under the knife in order to be youthful. The guest is Maud, please pronounce your last name because I've forgotten it again. Mates Dennis. Mates Dennis and she comes from a medical background but also is interested in the science and the nature around remaining youthful and she's going to share today many tips on how we can remain youthful without actually going under the knife and this is going to be a very interesting show for me because you know as people may know uh, i am over 60 and so is maud and i am actually quite proud that i look the way that i do and Obviously, I've got my own techniques for remaining youthful, but I'm always open to ideas. And this is what Maud is going to present to us today, many ideas on how we can remain youthful. So what are your three things that you suggest that we can institute today in able to look and feel amazing, Maud? Well, my three... Um mechanisms i suppose are mind body soul and so what i thought is i'll take of, of those three i'm actually going to give three tips for each that, that are very practical because it's we could have a long discussion about how it's important to have mindset which is very important and lifestyle choices but i thought it might be a little bit um better to just make it very practical so i'm just going to start with mind um and the first thing is really uh your thoughts your beliefs and your words and your actions and a lot of people as they get older will say things like oh I'm having a senior moment or oh my bones are too old oh I'm too old for this and there's a lot of words and behind the words thoughts that actually are telling your body that you are old and actually the first thing to do is to really pull back on that um, and it might just sound a little bit woohoo, but there have been studies, there was a study in the late, late 1970s where they took a group of 70-year-old men, two groups actually, uh, from rest homes, and they put them into environments. One just went to an environment where they were able to reminisce about their, their earlier life. And the other one, they put them in a a time warp they went back into somewhere that looked like it was 20 years ago so it had all the um, news articles that were there they had pictures of them at that time they didn't have any mirrors or anything um, when they arrived there nobody helped them come in you know because the deal was by uh, 20 years younger but the amazing thing was at the end of that experiment which is just a week both groups had amazing changes in their health but the ones who had been living as if they were youthful, you know, they were giving up their, you know, walking sticks. And, 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 and men who had been quite frail going into the experiment were coming out of the experiment and paying, you know, touch rugby on the field as they went to say goodbye. So mindset and your beliefs are really important. And if you just, all I would say is watch your words. I never say I'm having a senior moment. I just say, oh, I forgot. You know, five-year-olds forget, 15-year-olds forget, 25-year-olds forget, a 61-year-old can forget, it's okay. I don't need to name it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need to label it in a disempowering way. And I think that's the first thing, um, that if you want to really maintain your vitality from the inside out, because when you're, you've got that inner vitality, it shows in all sorts of ways, and you do have a more radiant glow and your skin does look more amazing um, all of those things but you've got to start at, and, and just watch you just in, in the first instance just be mindful and watch the words you're using yeah I absolutely uh, agree with you there uh, because I have noticed that over the past two years when I've lot, let go of a lot of my own stuff my own beliefs uh, from the past about how negative my life was being, even going right back to childhood, uh, just letting go of that stuff, letting go of my stories has really improved the way that I look. Um, 
not just from a pet perspective of uh, externally, but also internally. You know, I feel so much healthier. I have more vitality. My skin looks more radiant. My hair is more radiant. And people say to me, what is it that you're doing? You know, what, what, what treatment are you having? Um, and the only treatment is looking at things from a different perspective and letting go of my stories of the past. Yeah, I mean, because that's, you know, I mean, this will affect the way your cells function, you know, and it's not woohoo science, it's, it's, it's very clear science that your cells respond to signals and the signals of energy and the words that you say and the thoughts that you have dictate how your cells operate and when they're operating in an optimal way, everything looks better, you feel better. Mm -hmm. you will as I see as we've said you'll look look better so that's the first thing um the second thing and I love this one I love this one uh is wake up with joy so uh, I don't know if everyone's aware of the telomeres so there are a couple of things in um the, the way our cells age one is gene expression um and Ends can be expressed, they can be upregulated and expressed a lot or downregulated and not expressed. And there's a lot of changes that happen with aging in terms of the way our genes express, but we can change that. We can sort of turn our collagen back on. We can, you know, we can do a lot of things which will give us a more youthful look. But the other thing that's very important in aging is the telomere. Now, at the end of the chromosomes, you've got a little um, cap, if you like. It's like the, if you imagine a shoelace, it's got that little plastic bit at the end that stops the shoelace unraveling. Well, our chromosomes have got one of these at the end of them to stop them unraveling. And every time the cells divide, it gets a little bit shorter. Um, and when it gets to a certain shortness, that's it, the cell dies. And when that cell dies, you know, that's, uh, that sets a whole lot of things in motion, which basically will lead to poorer health and shorter lifespan. But the great thing is we can increase the length of our telomeres mm -hmm. by some of the things that we do. It and one of, them, with joy. Well, yeah. one of them is waking with joy. Would you believe that? And so people might go, well, how can I wake with joy? So wait a minute, this is, and this is one of the one, this is one of my three top things that you can do today is you just wake and you express gratitude for <clears throat> a number of things. Um, you know, and it, it can be, I'm so grateful that I've got this really warm duvet because it's so cold. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be profound and, and it should be something that you can feel and it means something to you. So you don't have to think, oh, I'm so glad, you know, like for that there's a peaceful community or, you know, that you think might be something that's appropriate to say, no, you're just grateful for whatever. Sometimes I'm just grateful for, um, hot cup of tea or, or you know whatever but be grateful for something and if you really want to amp it up um, express gratitude to yourselves Ex express gratitude to yourselves for being so amazing and doing a great job I mean imagine that you were uh, you had a factory of workers you know when do you get the most out of your you know the people working for you is that when you are berating them all the time and just saying how terrible it all is or is it when you go wow guys you're doing a really good job and you give that well imagine that yourselves are the workers you know they're you're doing they're giving you your body this amazing body that we get to live in um, and just imagine if they're getting all this positivity how much uh, better and more efficiently they're going to work and I do have a gratitude meditation and we can put the link uh, for that and that I'm happy to give to you if you're not sure how to do a, a, a meditation and particularly a gratitude one but actually just just express gratitude for three things when you wake and that will bring joy and, and waking with joy will will lengthen your telomeres. That is amazing I, you know I always thought uh, that you did your gratitude before you went to bed. Um, I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter when you do it. You can do it when you go to bed as well. I mean, double dose it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, I, and I never realised it had such uh, an amazing impact on, on your neural networks like you're discussing now. Yeah. 
uh, you know, I just thought it was something to help you with your mindset, to make you feel happier. Uh, but, you know, what you've just told me has blown me away. Well, I mean, it does all of those things as well. I mean, it's, it, you know, like the health benefits of gratitude are huge. But actually, you know, just from a purely um, a aging point of view, uh, keeping yourselves healthier by lengthening the telomeres is one of the best things you can do. You know, okay. far better than having a Botox injection. Yeah. Far better. Uh, you know, I, I will do anything um, to avoid uh, having to go under the knife. It's just not something that appeals to me. And fillers yeah. and Botox, they're things that... I mean, I... I mean, I respect people if that's their choice, but I, I, li I would like people to understand that there are many other choices that they could ha that they have available to them. And a lot of people don't, aren't aware that there are all these other things. Exactly. So the next thing, which, is, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, so what is the next thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the next thing, so this is the third tip from my, the mind part of the journey. Um, and this is, I think, a key one, and is that the, you must, and I'm saying you must, and I wouldn't normally say that, I'd usually say, you know, it's a good idea to, but really you must have some way of managing stress. Because from an evolutionary point of view, um, the stress response in the body has not evolved from the time we were cavemen, cavemen, cavewomen. Um, so, you know, as cave people, <laughs> We would be, you know, going about our, our normal daily life, hunting, gathering, perhaps, and then there might be a danger, maybe a saber-toothed tiger or something. And in that moment, our stress response would kick in, which is a fight or flight response. And I think people would be aware of that fight, flight or freeze type of response. Um, and everything that happens then, your, your body is flooded with hormones that actually have a very specific um, uh, intent, which is to get you to safety, um, if, if, if you can, to save your life. So uh, you don't need to think, you don't need to, you know, be arguing, you don't have to have rational thought, you just need to get blood to your muscles so you can run, everything is geared to getting you away from that danger. And then when, you know, from the caveman's point of view, you get back to the cave, and you'd have a relax. And then the body would switch from the stress response back into the other response, which I like to call, and it has been coined, I didn't make this up, but I, uh, rest, restore, and repair. Right. And, and that's when the body, that, well, that's when the body does its own surveillance. It goes around and checks, are there sort of cells that they are a bit out of order that they need to be put, held in check? Um, are there microbes that need to be dealt with? You know, this is the time your body does its self-healing. So fast forward to the 21st century and someone's late for a meeting. Oh, my phone's broken. You know, I, I could list probably a hundred different things that people might go through during the day that turn their fight or flight response on. Now that response is the same response as it was years ago. And when it's on, it's on. And it's not, it's not, oh, this is, this, this is only a small stress compared to that stress. It's, it isn't like that. It's like if it's, it's on, it's on. And when it's on, your rest, restore, and repair is not on. And that's why if you look at all of the major diseases at the moment, uh, they all have stress as a major risk factor. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're stressed, you can't be doing any self-healing. And so it's vital that you have mechanism to get yourself out of the stress response. And, you know, because I'm trying to be very practical here and give people very practical things that they can institute immediately. This is another one of those three, which okay. is a breathing exercise. Okay. Uh, what sort of breathing, breathing exercise would you recommend? Well, th this is one that's called square breathing. And you can choose the number. I'm going to say five, where you breathe in for five, hold for five, breathe out for five, hold for five, breathe in for five, hold for five, breathe out for five, hold for five. So it's, that's, it's that sort of, um, that's the deal. And it should be for a couple of minutes. So you might do it um, 10 times. Okay. 
And, and what and if, would that do in terms of relieving stress? Okay, so what that does is, and, and these are nice big deep breaths, and you know you're holding and then you're breathing completely out what that does is it engages your diaphragm and when your diaphragm is engaged it engages the vagal nerve and when the vagal nerve is engaged it turns on your parasympathetic nervous system which switches off your sympathetic nervous system so basically your parasympathetic nervous system is your rest restore and repair system and and people actually so, fail to understand how often they are in the fight flight response even a negative thought can put you into the fight flight response can't it Maud? that's right and and you know we just live in this life these days where really if you looked at it um people are just living in high stress situations mm -hmm. and if they do that, your, your body can't do self-healing. We all have stuff happening to us all the time, but your body is, is just this amazing, um, I want to call it a machine because it's so much more sophisticated than any you know, machine, but your body is just this amazing network of you know, health-giving, um, you know, it wants to keep you healthy. And given the time to do it, it will do a really good job. You know, it might not do a perfect job, it'll do a much better job than if you um, don't give it the time. And actually, if you want to look youthful and healthy and have vitality, then you really need to be healthy. Because when you're not healthy, you don't feel 100%. You know, and that shows in every cell in your body and it shows in the way you look. Um, and, you know, your lifespan is shortened, you know, and for me, I'm 61 now, but I want to be around for another 60 years. I feel like I've got a lot to offer and a lot to do. So it's very important for me to remain healthy. And it's, so it's absolutely vital that I have a good stress management. And, you know, there are lots of different techniques. I'm not saying breathing is the only one, but something that you could do today if you don't already have the technique is you can do that breathing exercise. Not so easy to learn meditation in a day, you know, or mindfulness. They're great practices as well. But just, just this breathing exercise, if you're going to do, have to do one thing, you can do that. Anyone can do that. Yes, absolutely. And, and it's for free. You don't have to go it's outside to do it. You can stop immediately when you feel the stress response coming in and, and you can do it immediately. And that's the, that's the really good thing about the techniques that you're sharing is there are things that people can institute today. Yeah. And, you know, like even if, if you're in a really stressful job, like I don't know when I to do it, just say, OK, every hour I'm going to set a little uh, timer on my phone and I'm just going to stop and do 10 of these breaths, you yeah. know, just regularly throughout the day. That would be, you know, that's a start. And, and your body is very good at telling you uh, that you're stressed, even if you're not aware of the fight flight response. There are certain things that will start to ache, like the pain in the neck, the stress on the shoulders. Uh, you don't have to wait for these things to happen to start the breathing techniques, because then it's actually gone a bit too far if you're feeling that stress uh, in physical symptoms in your body. Mm. Uh, it is really a problem, you know, people are going around holding their necks and you know that they're carrying the weight of the world on the shoulders and, and you just want to say to them, please do something about your stress, but they're not aware enough. So this is really bringing out that awareness so people can understand this is the fight, flight response, fight, flight, freeze, it's affecting you and stress is the major contributor of so many illnesses today. Mm. Yeah, so um, that's my, that are my three tips for the mind part of, you know, there, there are hundreds and hundreds, but I just want to keep it nice and contained. And so I think that's three things in the mind. I'm going to share three things from the body now, if that's all right. Yes. So the first thing is move your body. <laughs> And, um, you know, you would have people, say, you know, talk about it all the time, you know, use it or lose it. You know, we're upright for a reason. You know, we, we, we got onto two, two legs for a reason. It was to be upright, not to be sort of crouched down sitting in front of our phone. So it's really important or in front of the TV or in front of a desk or wherever. So it's very important to move your body. And um, look, the 
benefits are huge. And there's a recent study that's come out that's shown that even 10 minutes a week, 10, to, 10 minutes to 60 minutes a week of light to moderate exercise can increase your lifespan and reduce your risk of life-limiting disorders like heart disease. So you can, you don't have to, you know, I look, if you do no exercise at the moment, you know, I wouldn't advise you to going and getting a gym membership, uh, you know, where really you're only going to, you know, it's only going to be value if you're there for five days because it's too big a jump. So if you're doing nothing now, just start doing something uh, and, you know, 10 minutes a week, make it 10 minutes a day. Could you find 10 minutes a day to move? And then, you know, maybe increase it. And there are studies that have shown that even people who start exercising in their 70s, you know, doing moderate exercise maybe three times a week, improve their quality of life and their health, and they improve their longevity. So wherever you are now, just move a little bit more than you are. And then when you get comfortable doing that, move a little bit more. And it may be that you end up, um, with a gym membership. But, you know, I, I've, I've read um, a story about marathon runners and people who've decided, you know, in their 50s, I'm going to actually run a marathon. Well, they don't decide that today and then wake up tomorrow and do the marathon. Yes. They decide that they're going to do the marathon and, and the next day they wake up and they run around the block. You know, and then they, you know, they, it, it's a process. So um, what I would say is rather than sort of set yourselves in lofty goals that you're, you're going to fail at, choose something that you do and celebrate that you've done it and be like, wow, I did my 10 minutes mm. of exercise today or tomorrow I might do 15. But, yeah. but move your body. It, it doesn't have to be anything much like you said. It could be as simple as parking your car a little bit further away from work. Mm -hmm. So you can things work. Um, I noticed that since I've stopped walking the dogs, because my dogs have sadly passed away now, that I feel less healthy because I am doing less exercise. And you mentioned the gym membership, and you may have noticed my little smile because that was a, t a step too far for me. Uh, in my mind, I thought if I join a gym and I'm paying for it, it means that I will go, but actually it didn't work for me. No, and, and that's, that'll be the same for most people. So, like, keep it real. Keep it real. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like, go, like walk up a flight of stairs. Okay, if, you know, you're on the, the 31st floor. I don't expect you to walk 31 <laughs> flights of floors. But, but maybe, maybe work, work, walk the last one. But one thing I do say is walk downstairs. I mean, downstairs is like, for me, it's like free exercise because it counts. Because yeah. you're moving your muscles and things, and you've got a lot of stuff going on, but it's 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 easy. Yes, <laughs> you it's know, easy. like if you're yeah. seven flights of stairs, I can walk down seven flights of stairs. That's easy. Yeah. yeah. So, so what about people who are lacking mobility as they get older? What sort of exercise can they do? Well, interestingly, you asked that. Um, there are exercises. Uh, there's one type of exercise that I, I don't do it so much anymore, but I, I used to do quite a lot. It's called T-TAP, so T-T-A-P-P. Uh, it's named after the woman who developed it, who's called Teresa Tap. But she's actually got a whole program, which is for people who've got limited mobility. So some of it's sitting in a chair you know, like exercise sitting in a chair. Um, and, you know, her website, I have no affiliation there, but it's t-tapp.com. Okay, so, you know, there's, there's some, there is something for everybody. And but, you know, do something that's fun for you. And what about this age-old excuse that people use when they say, I just haven't got the time? And that's what I said, you know, 10 minutes. You know, when I did the TTAP, I have to do the bit. It was a 15 minutes. And sometimes I felt like I don't really have the time. And then I think, yeah, but I can do 15 minutes. Yeah. We can all find 15 minutes, you know, because um, 15 minutes earlier, getting up in the morning, you've got 15 minutes. You know, it's, it, we can, it's a priority thing. You know, you either, it's important to you or not. And I would just say, you know, if you're someone who cares about having a you know a long life but not just long in years but long in quality um where you feel like 
you know, every morning you feel like jumping out of bed and the world is there for you to do whatever. That's how I want to live my life. I don't want to be um, a a spectator at life. I don't want to be sitting on the sidelines watching. I want to be an active participant. So if that's what you feel, then you've, you know, you've got to, there are certain things that you, you need to do. You do need to keep moving. Yeah, you have to make the effort, don't you? Yeah. If, if, and, you know, it's, the, yeah, you'll get the reward. Young, if you want to look young and youthful, there are certain things that you need to do and sitting in your comfort zone all day long is not going to achieve that. No. So the next thing is I really think that, I'm, that you need to supplement with antioxidants. So, you know, a lot of people argue, well, if you have a really good diet, then you should get enough antioxidants in your diet. The antioxidants you'll get from fruit and vegetables. Um, but the reality is that unless you're living in an ideal world and, an, and in an ideal environment with everything ideal, the likely thing is that you are not going to get enough antioxidants, so you'll need to supplement. But let me step back a little bit and say, why, why do you need antioxidants? So most diseases that we have and most of the signs that we have in aging uh, start from a, a, a an inflammatory process at, at the level of the cells, some sort of inflammation. And at the, the core of inflammation, or at the, the, the cause of inflammation is often something called free radical damage. So we make, a, you know, we're little biochemical beings, we're making reactions all the time. And in those reactions, we make um, molecules called free radicals. And then we have free radicals that are in our environment, um, UV radiation, pollution. So we're bombarded with free radicals from inside and from outside. And free radicals are basically unstable molecules. That they, they, they lack an electron and, so that, and they're unstable. So what they want to do is they go and scavenge the electron to make themselves stable. And they don't care where they do that from. So they'll, if, if they'll go, if there's healthy tissue, they'll go and scavenge it from healthy tissue. So you can just imagine, it's like a little gray. So in, in, the, in the lining, say, of your arteries, it's like a little graze and then it's scavenged again. There's another little graze and then there's an inflammatory process. And next minute you've got hardening of the arteries and next minute you've got a heart attack. It's that sort of process. So antioxidants are like these um, good Samaritans of uh, the good Samaritans who come and say, hey, free radical, <laughs> have an electron, have one of mine. So you don't have to go and damage some good tissue. I mean, that's, that's a very simplistic way of looking at it, but actually it's sort of basically what it happens. And, you know, it's, it's good to have a cocktail of antioxidants if you like, but you, you really need to have good antioxidant, um, for me, uh, good antioxidant uh, reserves to cope with the free radicals that, are, that you are creating every day that are be, you're being bombarded with. And just for the ones that might turn up when you have illness processes, you might create more. Uh, free radicals. So I sort of see it as a balance. You've got free radicals and you've got antioxidants. And I load up on my antioxidants so that I've always got um, some fighting going for, you know, to, to protect me. And just a very easy and simple free radical uh, antioxidant, sorry, supplement is one called Tea Green 97, which is just a great antioxidant. Each capsule is the equivalent of seven cups of green tea without the caffeine. So um, you can have one to four of these a day. So it's just a really great way to protect yourself. Uh, and it has the added benefit, well, particularly for women, I think we're always looking for this benefit as we get a bit older. It has the added benefit of, of helping fat burning. Oh. So matcha so, is a um, bit similar to that, isn't it, matcha? Uh, yeah, match is, but probably you're not going to get the amount of just drinking tea and things. You're not going to get the same concentration of antioxidants you'll get them as this capsule. And this is a capsule, I think, Paula, we're going to offer um, a 20% discount. Yes, for, uh, so people, a capsule for, to get it. and you don't have to be capsule, yeah. yeah, 
Fantastic. No, that's right. So what, one capsule is equivalent to seven cups of green tea. So, you know, you would get a lot of antioxidants drinking green tea and matcha, but you've got to drink a lot to get the benefit of one capsule. And as I said, it's got the added benefit of helping um, fat loss. So uh, and it's something that I would really recommend, I think. I mean, there are many, you know, there are many different antioxidants, uh, anti antioxidant supplements. And uh, my general advice about supplements is that they're not all created equally so you should be careful but you know I just want to make something very practical and easy this is a very um, good quality supplement uh, that that's quite easy and affordable for people if mm -hmm. they just want to boost up their antioxidant levels yeah I mean I, I was aware that green tea is a very a very good antioxidant and there is a culinary version of matcha that you can put into smoothies and make tea out of but i actually hate the taste of green tea so for me this is like music to my ears yeah i mean you know and like seven cups right <laughs> you know like one cup but seven cups. I don't mind the green tea, particularly if it's got a little bit of a flavour, but I don't know if I want to have seven cups of it. Uh, but, I, you know, one capsule, and I sometimes may have up to four capsules a day. Yeah, because I, I bought the, the culinary grade of matcha, and it said, oh, make a matcha latte, and I made it, and it was like the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted in my life. So, But I do put it in smoothies, although I have been told that smoothies are probably not that healthy for you because it puts a lot of strain on the digestive system uh, but you know there's different schools of thoughts about these different products so you know the information that you've just shared now uh, about getting the antioxidants in a capsule is really helpful to me and I'm sure it'd be helpful for many other people as well so thank you for that that's fine and then the the next bit of the body part is I actually just want to talk about how we treat our body and this is I think we taught you you had in the um the promo that we, there are three you know three common mistakes that people make about how they treat their skin and I'm just going to go over those because you know our skin is our largest organ on our body um and it's not only the largest organ but it's the one that is it sort of presents us itself it's sort of how, how we present ourselves to the world I mean you know, people look at our skin, you know, they don't, you know, they're not looking at, you know, your, the muscular, um, you know, makeup of your fingers when they, when they meet you, they're looking at your face and, you know, your skin and how that is. So I just thought I'd go over these three common mistakes that people make. And the first one is that people use cleansers on their skin that are alkaline. And just about, you know, we've tested a lot of soaps uh, and they're generally all alkaline. Um, the one that I use and that I personally sell is not that it's pH balanced. And there are, I'm not saying it's the only one around, but there are some pH balanced um, cleansers. Now, you don't want something that's pH neutral. You want something pH balanced. So our skin has got a pH of about, say, five around you know plus or minus which is slightly acidic so a neutral ph is seven and alkaline is above seven so we have an acid mantle on our skin it's one of the body's protective mechanisms you know we have that and people then go and just wash that off every day twice a day with alkaline soaps um like an alkaline cleanser is perfect if you've got a dirty greasy oven and you want to get rid of that grease and grime, yes, go and get an alkaline cleanser. It's going to be great. But if you're using it on your skin, what you're going to do is you're going to remove one of the body's protective layers. You're going to make the skin more sensitive. You're going to make it break down more. If you've already got sensitive skin, it's going to be even worse. Um, so this is the first thing is just get it, you know, invest in a cleanser like a, a, a what ours is called the body bar or a cleanser that is pH balance. So how would, they, um, how would they know they're buying something that's pH balanced? Well, you know, the, to be honest, um, I have a little pH pen, but you could buy litmus paper um, at the chemist. I don't think it's very expensive, some litmus paper. And then it usually has a, usually have a little guide. It usually changes colour. Um, it, it'll say what colour it will change if it's acid or which colour it will change if it's alkaline. Mm -hmm. And just so you could test that. 
Um, or, you know, or for example, come to you, Paula, because, you know, you, I know that you now um, sell a range of products and all of the cleansers in that range are pH balanced. And they're, you know, they're from the liquid, so called, it's not a soap because soaps are alkaline, but it's a, a liquid body cleanser to the body bar that looks like a soap to the Lumi Spa, which is a really an amazing um, device uh, for cleansing your skin. All of the cleansers that, you know, I know that is in your range of pH balance. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting to know all of the products because I think that new skin are amazing uh, in, in, in the full range of products. And obviously we are offering 20% off today for any of the Lumispa products. And that offer will be available. Uh, I will make it available for a month after uh, the show. So anybody who wants to take advantage of that can just get in touch with me and, and can look at the full range. But this is amazing information that you're sharing. I wasn't actually aware of that. Um, I'm not a big one for cleansing and toning and doing all of those things. Um, but it doesn't really show on my skin. I will cleanse my face, but I'm not one for wearing a lot of makeup either. So does it depend on how much makeup you wear to how much you have to use a cleanser? Well, yeah, I mean, I think if you're wearing makeup, then you've got to remove it. So you want to use the cleanser. Um, and, you know, just in, you know, if I would say if you're not someone for having a lot of routine, maybe at the end of the day when you've been out and it's, you know, there's, there's so much pollution um, in cities. If you live in a city, uh, I remember when I was living in London, you know, I would just, you know, clean my face with a tissue and I would have grime on it, you know, if you've been on the tube or something like that. So mm -hmm. there's so much pollution. I would say get rid of that grime and um, uh, at least once a day. But the reality is that there are, and, and some of the big, you know, the big, beauty names that are out there that you buy in the department store is a very expensive you know buy this beauty bar they're alkaline i've tested them so that's the thing it's like you know you don't want to be using those because what you do you're starting off you're ruining the canvas that you you know that we're, we're born with body is as I've mentioned, I think the body's amazing. So I want to work with my body to get the best out of my body. I'm not going to try and, you know, um, break something that's clearly not broke, you know, try and fix something with an alkaline that's clearly not a broken thing. Yes. You know, it's not a problem that we've got an acid mantle. It's there for a reason. So exactly. I mean, you've talked about having a routine for looking after your skin. What would that entail? What would a simple routine be that would be sufficient for most men or women? Well, I think you should clean your, clean your face to get the, the dirt and grime at least once a day, preferably twice a day. But, you know, look, if you've done it at night and you wake up in the morning and you're rushing, probably there hasn't, you know, sleeping, you haven't really... Um, gained a lot I mean some people sweat a lot at night but you know but at least once a day cleanse your face and then put on some uh, moisture uh, uh, moisturizer uh, and if you're out and about in the daylight hours and that's when you're putting your moisturizer it should really have some um, sun protection because it's actually sun damage which has got UV the UV damage that you get from sun is through free radicals <laughs> And so that is very aging. I mean, you can just, people think that wrinkles and all that sort of thing are, are just because of age. But if you check a part of your skin that never sees the sun, you know, like even just in this part of the arm up here doesn't see the sun so much. There aren't that many wrinkles up there. <laughs> yeah. A lot of our wrinkles and things are due to sun damage. So I would just... Um, cleanse and then put a moisturizer on and I'll tell you why I have moisturizer in a moment um, and a moisturizer on with sun protection that would be my you know that's like skincare 101 okay that's, that's and you know as I said you know if, if you don't do anything just start once a day you know don't try and don't go for it don't go to the department store where they're going to sell you <clears throat> six different products you know you're not going to use them if you've never used anything <laughs> But just say, okay, what can I use? And, you know, there are some great little cleansers, like there's a lovely cleanse and tone, actually, product. Um, 
a new skin that you just have it in the shower, it's a little foam and you just pop it on your face, it's pH balanced and your skin will feel amazing after that. Mm-hmm. And so that's done and it's quick, you know. So there are lots of there are lots of options if you're not someone who has products already. But you, you want to have a, a cleanser that's pH balanced. So the next thing coming into moisturizers was that what happens, we have natural moisturizing factors on our skin. And as we age, they reduce. So our skin becomes dehydrated. Now, the common mistake that people make is they think their skin is dry. And because they think they've got dry skin, they put oils on it. But their skin isn't dry needing oil. The skin is dehydrated and it needs moisture. And most moisturizers out there are based, or are, you know, the, the key ingredient in them, they might have, you know, there'll be all sorts of ingredients, but the key ingredient in them is a mineral oil of some type. So mineral oils come from the petroleum industry, the, uh, the distillates of the petroleum industry and refined yeah. but that's where they come from and they are moisturizers in the sense that they will put a an occlusive film on the skin and prevent moisture loss but they will not add anything to your skin that has got dehydrated through the aging process because you've lost some of your own natural moisturizers what you need to do is you need to replenish you use moisturizers that mimic what we have on our skin already. And what we have on our skin are things called humectants. And humectants draw water in. So they will plump up a dry dry, um, dry, dry skin and dry skin cells. So I mean, like I'm sure there are some ladies on here who if I say crepey skin, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've actually noticed that even on my arms. Crepey skin is not because of age per se. It's because your skin is dehydrated. Oh and if you use humectants to moisturize, that crepiness will go. Wow. Because your skins will plump up. So that crepey look is because we've got dehydrated cells. So what you want in your products is no mineral oil. So the new skin products, the ones that I use and the ones that you're, you're going to be looking at as well, Paula, I know, um, actually those products don't have any mineral oil. So there's no mineral oil. All of the moisturizing um, uh, ingredients are ones that uh, would be humectants or emollients. So they'll have things like, I mean, there's one called sodium pyridone carboxylic acid or NAPC. PCA, it yeah. sounds very, you know, people go, oh, that's very chemical. Yeah, it's a chemical that we have on our body. Um, and, and it's we're mimicking that. Or hyaluronic acid is another one. Hyaluronic acid is an humectant. Yeah. And you see that in products. So basically, you want to use products that have got humectants and avoid products with mineral oils. Because mineral oil will, as I said, form an occlusive barrier, but it won't allow your skin to do its natural, you know, the people say breathing, the skin doesn't exactly breathe, but I think when, when you, we say skin breathe, people know what we mean is that there's that natural um, function that the skin has to um, get rid of toxins and to take things in. We interfere with that when we put a, a barrier on it. So you want to be using moisturizers with humectants in them okay it's really interesting because i this is the first time i've ever heard of this and i do use uh oils and i think one thing that is really important to consider is when do you start this sort of routine is age relevant does it is it better to start younger or can it make a difference if you start using these in your 50s or the 60s is there an optimum age when you should be starting to care for your skin? Um, I would always say the optimum age is now, the, the moment you're thinking about it. I don't think that you're ever, you know, I, for example, when you're very young, um, you just want to have a, you know, a cleanse and moisturize. You don't want to have treatments. You know, as you get older, you might add treatments into your age and you don't need them when you're younger. 
Um, but I think that when you, you know, treatment stuff for specific issues you might have, like fine lines or sunspots. So I don't want to to get too sidetracked talking about skincare. Maybe another time we can do that. But um, but I don't think there's you're ever too um, old to start. You will always be able to see a change because you because the next so if we move past moisturizers the next thing I was going to say is that a lot of people the mistake they make is that they think that the only thing they can do at any you know as they get older to look more youthful is to go under the knife and have things like or have Botox needles fill, uh, Botox fillers or surgery yes which, you know, they will reduce, uh, you know, they will, they have an effect. I'm not saying that that won't make you look younger. But there are a lot of things that happen as you age, and there are many things that you can do for them. So some of the things that make you look older is that as you get older, your skin looks more dull. And it looks dull because you have reduced skin turnover, and you have a, a thicker layer of dead cells on your skin. So Botox isn't going to remove that. Surgery is not going to remove that. Fillers aren't, fillers aren't going to change that. But there are, you can use, you know, home peels. We've got lovely peels that you can use to get an exfoliation. Or my favorite at the moment is the Loom Spa, which is this beautiful um, uh, device, home beauty device, that will give you a deep clean. So it'll, it, you can use it as your cleansing part of your routine. Uh, it comes with a cleanser that is pH balanced. And it will also give you a gentle exfoliation, so it will improve the texture of your skin and the, the heart, so it will feel softer and smoother. It'll be more radiant, and all of those things will give a useful glow. But as well as that, the ingredients in the cleanser, in that particular cleanser, because it's an age lock cleanser, um, go in, they send messages to your cells, and they switch on your natural collagen. So switching on your natural collagen, your natural elastin is going to remove, it's not going to get rid of every single line that you've got, but it's going to minimize the look of lines yes. and minimize that, you know, you know, firm up your skin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the thing that just having no lines doesn't actually in itself make you look youthful if your skin's rough and if your skin is dull. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I want people to understand, you, you know, there's science there now that says we know how to switch the genes on that keep the skin looking useful, the collagen, the elastin. We know how to uh, change them, you know, reduce the melanin production so you don't get so many sunspots and so much hyperpigmentation. Mm -hmm. You know, we know how to do that. We need, we know how to send signals to cells to do that. And it happens in the ingredients and it can be um, augmented if you've got a device like the Lumi Star, which I know that you're going to offer a really great deal on 20% on that. Yeah, I'm um, so. I'm first introduced to the Lumi Spa and uh, New Skin are very upfront. They give you all of the ingredients that you're going to be using in the products. And my eyes were like wide open when I saw all these long names of, of chemicals within the products. And you said something really interesting to me, which is, do you know the ingredients of a banana? <laughs> yeah. uh, when you sent me the ingredients of the banana and I read all of the things that's in the banana, it made absolute sense to me because I must admit I was really alarmed at what I saw in the products. But then when you showed me what was in a banana, and they're just words, they're not actually harmful chemicals that's in um, new skin products. These are naturally occurring oh. products, aren't they? Chemicals. Well, what, I, what I can say to you is the new skin products, are ba they're pretty much plant-based. Yeah. Um, and plants have got chemical names. Uh, we, ha we are biochemical uh, beings. And it depends if you're a lump or a splitter. You, know, you could say, oh, this is a banana, or you could, you could list all the ingredients in the banana. And that's what the, the new skin does. It's very upfront. It tells you everything that's in there. Um, but one of the things that I can guarantee about the product, and they guarantee, is that they go through a rigorous quality assurance process and they there is no toxicity so their products go through such a rigorous um you know much more rigorous than most products yeah. uh, just because most most companies don't have the equipment to be able to test 
the way that these products are tested, they're tested for metals, heavy metals, for microbial contamination. I mean, I can guarantee that they're non-toxic products. Mm. So that's the one thing that I can say. And so unless you're a chemist, I do think that, you know, we've got to the stage where everyone thinks they're an expert and they pick up the ingredient list. And, oh, I don't want to have that ingredient. I don't want to have this ingredient. I'm like, and I'm sometimes looking, I'm going, well, really? I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm not a chemist. Uh, or a biochemist, so I, I don't know. And I wouldn't be so um, bold as to sort of take a recipe that, you know, some, you know, uh, brilliant cake maker, maker made and so when you shouldn't have that ingredient, take that one out because it might be that that is an ingredient is the one thing that makes that cake the special thing that it is. Exactly. So I, I don't feel that it's my job to go and pick up the ingredients of something, but, but, but I am... I am very keen to one know that actually it's high quality and it's non-toxic. And it, it's, and it's not going to harm, yeah, it's not going to harm me or the planet. Those, yeah. those things. Good. I'm glad you, I'm glad you cleared that up. I and mean, especially you cleared it up for me because I was quite alarmed when I saw uh, the names that I couldn't produce because one of grandma's rules is if you can't say it, you shouldn't be eating it, but that's, uh, or you shouldn't be using it, which is not strictly true, is it? Well, you know, I think times have changed, you know, I think these days, you know, it's all about, you know, you've got to have the ingredients listed and um, it's all about transparency. But, you know, the reality is that we haven't caught up to know what that means. And so mm -hmm. sometimes that can be used against us. So someone can just put hundreds of things there and they might just put in the bottom there something that really you wouldn't want, but you're so bamboozled by the, all the ingredients, you don't really pick it out. So I think it's just a difficult one. And, and for me, as I said, I'm not a biochemist. So um, I, I don't try and pick, up, pick out all the things. And what I, I go for is let me, let me, go to a company where I know that they, you know, what their values are and their values are about being non-toxic and about making effective products so and quality products. So, you know, I think Which that's, really that's why, that's how I deal with it. Yeah, it's really important to understand um, what toxics do to the body and why we're detoxing in the first place. Yeah. And, and you explained that quite eloquently earlier with the free radicals. So, you know, for me, I have got no, um, no doubt whatsoever that new skin products are very, very good. And I'm looking forward to seeing the effects on, on me. And it'll be interesting because I'm quite uh, an upfront person. I'm on YouTube a lot. So we'll be watching my process and my progress over the next few months to see if it really works. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's great. I'm really looking forward to it as well. So shall I move on to that was sort of the body part. We're on to the yes. soul now. We're getting to the, the last leg. So um, the first thing, and, and you alluded to it a little bit at the beginning, the first thing in the soul is that really to uh, get rid of emotional baggage. That's what it is. It will weigh you down. But particularly, um, you know, I'm trying to keep it very practical. So something that you can do is practice forgiveness. So when people have studied populations of the blue zone, I don't know if you're aware of the blue zones, but the blue zones are particular, uh, uh, refer to particular parts of the world where p people age very well and that there are, you know, large numbers of you know, centenarians, so people in their hundreds. Um, mm -hmm. So there's Okinawa in Japan, there's sort of um, some islands in Sardinia, there's some places in Greece. So um, th there are a number of these blue zones and they've been studied a lot. And one of the character traits of people who, uh, you know, are active and healthy and, and living a great life in their hundreds is forgiveness. And a lot of people, you know, the thing is, the thing about forgiveness is forgiveness isn't condoning. So somebody's done something to me and I'm going to forgive them. Mm -hmm. It's not about condoning what the action. It's not about that. It's just about freeing me from mm -hmm. the energy of this thing. And if this person has transgressed in a way, you know, I'm still going to forgive them, but I don't necessarily need to let them back into my life. <laughs> uh, you know, it, you know, forgiveness isn't now it's okay, mate, we will forget it ever happened. That that's not the case. It's 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 a release for yourself 
yeah. uh, and then you you make whatever decision um, a, a, around the act. So forgiveness is sort of like you know I'm, I, I said I'm going to make it really practical. So how can you make that really pr practical? So one thing that I think you can do to practice forgiveness is to use a technique called Ho'oponopono, which is an ancient Hawaiian forgiveness practice, and it consists of four statements. And so I'm going to go, it doesn't matter the order, but I tend to go through them in this order. So let's just say um, Joe over there has, you know, really ticked me off and he's really um, done something that I feel quite aggrieved by. Um, but I'm going to forgive him. You know, I could, I'm going to forgive him. And now he, I'm, he doesn't have to be in the room now. He can be gone. I'm just thinking about it in my own little head here. Uh, but I go through these statements. So in my own space, no one needs to be around. I say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And I might have to say that quite a few times, you know, in my head to Joe until it feels like that his, that forgiveness has occurred and it will feel like a lightness of spirit. And you might be thinking, well, hold on a second. She said Joe did something to her and she said, I'm sorry. Uh, but that's how you do it. <laughs> uh, that's how you get into it really quickly. And it really comes, you know, if you're a spiritual person, it comes um, from the, uh, it comes from the whole, can you still hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it, it, it comes from this whole idea that we are all one. We yeah. are one. I am you, you are me. So it works. So basically it works. So if you have got somebody that, um, somebody that you feel, you're feeling, you know, aggrieved, try that and try it today. And it will, it will free you. And that freeing up, will help you stay youthful. And if you're not quite sure who to forgive, forgive yourself. I do it a lot. You know, we've got so much to forgive ourselves about, you know, forgive yourself for speaking meanly to yourself. Yeah, and for holding on forgive to yourself. these things for so long. I think that is, you know, one of my yeah. biggest um, acceptances for me was forgiving myself for holding on to this crap for all these years that were affecting me adversely, making me uh, feel sad, making me look older, making me act um, in my child, in a child state like that, vulnerable in a child that we all have within us. So that to me was the biggest thing that I was ever able to do was to forgive myself for hanging on to this stuff. Yeah. And so that, that's the, the first tip. And the second one, I like to call it... Um, bringing sexy back and uh, it's about actually um, make it, getting yourself in a situation where you feel when I say sexy you feel alive you feel tingly because that's a very vibrant um, feeling and it shows and there's you know there's no point expecting that anyone's going to see anything from you know like you need to feel it in yourself before anyone else will see it. Yeah. So, you, you know, you need to just bring it back. And so just do something like go and buy some really gorgeous, sexy underwear and, and wear it under your clothes and go out. Nobody needs to know other than you. But you, you have that little, you know, you've got that little like, yeah, I know what's going on here. I feel like I feel really nice or, you know, nice, to, you know, stocking on suspenders or, you know, go and have a, you know, people have these boudoir shots now, you know, they're very beautiful, you know, sort of sexy, you know, in a very classy, sexy way. But bring that back because that will, that will take years off your, you know, you're going to look, you know, it's, it's, that's like an instant facelift, if you oh. like. You can really feel that. <laughs> and you just got to say, actually, I can do that because, when you do that, there's a little zing that you get in your life and it's just it's so much more worthwhile, you know, and, and fun. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, then, I, I, I'm going to make a confession here because recently um, I had a much younger boyfriend and for that short time that I was with him, I actually glowed. 
so yeah. that that's just to validate you know that if you're feeling sexy and good it really does show uh, you know i really glowed for those few weeks and i i yeah. loved the experience but then i had to come back to earth again <laughs> yeah no but i think that that's right and i think that you know you, you know women get to a certain age and they think oh whatever that's all you know but no we we have that vibrant we can have that vibrancy with them you know to, to, to 100 to over 100 it, it it's something from within us you just have to feel it yeah. when you feel it 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 it, it, it exudes out of you mm -hmm. uh, and then the final one um is learn something new learn something new you know your brain loves to learn something new and one of the things for me that has been you know it's it has helped me in so many ways actually but you know particularly from learning something new as I um you know at, at the age of 58 uh, yeah 58 plus I took up network marketing and so the great thing is I'm learning something new, but the great thing is I didn't have to go and study in a traditional way. It's something I can learn as I'm doing it. So that's really good. So learning, that suits me because I, you know, I don't want to go and sit in a classroom, but I love learning. So I'm learning new things. Yeah. Um, but as well as that, there are, you know, it's a social thing. It's about networking. It's about building relationships. And that's really good socializing for you, that sort of social um, circle and spending time connecting with people, connection is really good for staying useful. And you make some extra money and that just takes the pressure off, you know, as you're coming up to retirement age, what am I going to be doing? You know, am I going to have to downgrade my lifestyle when I have to give up work? So for me, uh, the learning something new that has just been like a gift is network marketing and it's open to any single person and you know you know that yourself you've got that experience Paula and um, you know people can come to you or, or, or they can come to me and they can ask more about that but that you know that's a, a way of not only learning something and remaining useful having access to some amazing products at great prices um, mm. and also a rewards program where you might get free things and making money and securing your retirement. So sort of, uh, but even if you don't want to do network marketing, because it's not for everybody, um, just do something new, learn something new. Brush your teeth with your left hand if you're a right-handed or vice versa. Yeah, but as um, uh, Eddie Smith was one of my guests on earlier shows, and we discussed the fact that actually now in this golden age that we're in is the era of the silverpreneur and there are, more, there are more over 60s now setting up businesses and thriving than ever before so it's an amazing yeah, opportunity yeah, and it, and it, that's coming it, up it is it's, it's and you know we you know if i wasn't doing network marketing i wouldn't be you know i've had to go on social media i've been on social media before if i wasn't on social media we, we our paths wouldn't have crossed and you know it's you know it's here we are it's fun We've had a, and, and you, you know, inspired fun. me more and this is going to be another confession you really inspired me by your video on the uh, poll so I have actually, I am enrolling in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, we'll go and do pole dancing. Yeah. Sorry, that's I'm going, I, there's, there's one close it's by. It's so too. much fun. It's so much fun. <laughs> and, and yeah, so that, 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 yeah. And I noticed that one of my other friends posted a video, a male, posted a video on Instagram too of him pole, uh, pole dancing. So I thought, well, why not? You know, I, I, exercise to me is boring. I used to be an aerobics instructor. I've been there, I've done that, and I really don't enjoy exercise. But, so if you are going to do something new and you don't want to exercise, pole dancing to me is a really viable option because it's going to be fun but it's still great yeah. for core work and for strength oh, perfect. yeah yeah it's great no, it's a wonderful exercise it's a wonderful no, exercise. i may be posting yeah. a picture of me soon pole dancing but i've got to get a bit better at it first <laughs> <laughs> so that's my my well, new activity that i am doing well, that, 
That's that's excellent. So that, you know that was my anyway. Hopefully that's my mind, body, soul. I've given people some you know like you might be able to choose a few things that you can actually do today. Very practical and easy things to do. And you know you adding you know looking after yourself and you know turning you know resetting the gene expression, lengthening your telomeres is sort of the scientific basis of it. But it comes down to just, you know, a good mindset, lifestyle choices. And if you're going to be buying products, buy products that are actually working for you and with you rather than against you. I think this has been a really, really informative uh, show today, Maud. And I hope that you've given people food for thought because, you know, ageing, although people think it is a process that we all have to go through, and of course we all get older, but we don't have to age in the way that we're ageing, do we? No, I, for me, I'd love to just smash, smash the stereotypes around ageing. And, you know, like I was watching the television early and it was talking about some 96-year-old guy who was on a velodrome. And, you know, I've seen a 100-year-old guy who was in some, you know, 100-metre race and a 92-year-old woman who was doing gymnastics. But, you know, and I sort of think to myself, hold it a second, what if that's the norm? Yes. And what people, how people are aging these days, that's just all the limiting beliefs and the bad choices. We don't know if bad's the right word, but you know, the choices that they've made that are they're disempowering and they're limiting. And if we just lifted the lid off all of that, maybe, you know, um, being on a velodrome at 60 or pole dancing at, you know, 80, that's just going to be the norm. And, and that's, that's what I plan to show as possible. That, that's my aim absolutely and i think you're doing an amazing job thank you very much thank you so much for being on the show show maud it's been a really enlightening show i can't wait to get started and and <laughs> be the product of the products so yes. you can monitor my progress over the next few months and see what happens to me and that's that's going to validate everything that you've talked about today or a lot of things that you've talked about Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so it's goodbye from Paula here in Paul, and I forgot to mention where you were, Maud. I'm in New Zealand. Good. Uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. Goodbye from me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.